Hi, my name is Leah Chantel. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to talk about how do you know what your true life purpose is that's coming from your soul. And that can be a very complex, deep, and yet simple question. Back in the day, people didn't question really who they were. They were pretty confident that they knew what their purpose was. So why are we so confused about our purpose in this day and age? And there are a few reasons for that. So one of the reasons why that people don't know what their sole purpose is that I'll begin with is that they don't listen to their intuition. They get information from outside sources. They may have influence from their parents saying you should pick this type of career or it could be a teacher, a professor, a friend family member that's influential, whoever it is, we all have these authority figures in our life, when, especially when we're growing up and we don't have power of our own yet. We are constantly trying to impress somebody. We're trying to get the approval of some authority figure. Even if we don't like our parents or we're rebellious, there's usually somebody influential in our lives that we're following. And it could even be a friend who's in your school, whoever it is they will often influence you to think that X, Y, and Z is your purpose. Maybe your friendship circle all wants to become doctors or lawyers. That was actually my circle when I was in high school. And for a long time, I measured myself against their success thinking because I hadn't chosen such a traditional career path that I wasn't as successful. But then I realized that maybe not being traditional is actually the way to go. But that I only discovered after listening to my soul, not listening to the outside influences around me. So point number one is we listen to the outside influences rather than our soul. And that's how we get lost. We listen only to external authority figures. And there's nothing wrong with external authority figures. It's just that as the world grows more complex, we have social media, we can follow people, we can see how this celebrity is doing over in that part of the world. There's even more external pressure to have a specific kind of life. We have to appear wealthy and have the top make of car or have a huge car or no car, or whatever that influence is. Basically, there are these people around us who we tend to follow who influence our decisions. And really, we wanna make those big decisions about our lives from deep inside, from deep here. But how do you know what your soul purpose is? How do you know that you're listening to your soul? Well, first of all, people are not very comfortable inside their bodies because they feel insecure about their body not looking a certain way. They think, I have to look like a certain celebrity and if I don't have a flat stomach or a small butt or big boobs or whatever it is that therefore I'm not living in the correct body and therefore I can't look at myself in the mirror or even connect to who I really am because I just can't stand the thought of seeing any imperfection in the reflection that stares back at me. And then beyond our insecurities with our body things grow more complex when we start thinking about what do we actually believe happens when we pass away? Do we reincarnate? Do we have other physical bodies that we inhabit? And what were those like? If you believe in reincarnation, then probably a lot of your lives in the past were kind of not so pretty, you know? A lot of people were poor hundreds of years ago. Years ago. We're very privileged to have what we have in our society today. And so the thought of reincarnation, I think the reason why people don't like it as a concept and hell and heaven are more popular is because it's very uncomfortable to think about, well, who would I have been in another life, you know? And it doesn't really matter if you believe in reincarnation or not to connect to your soul. It's just that you have to get comfortable with who you are regardless of whatever you believe and you have to unconditionally love and accept yourself, regardless of whatever experiences you've had in this lifetime, if they fit the mold of what other people say your life should look like. It doesn't really matter. Like there's no mold to life that you have to fit. It's all stuff that's just kind of made up by society in order to sell stuff, you know? 
you watch TV and you turn on the programming to watch the celebrity and they look a certain way and it's really designed to sell the show so that the TV improves their ratings so they can sell to more advertisers who can push more products that people can consume. And so it's all just a big advertising construct. And we shouldn't get too wrapped up in what our bodies look like. We should be able to just look in the mirror and say, hey, soul, how are you doing today? What do you need? Do you need to pray? Do you need to go have a walk in nature? Do you need to have a look at some flowers or crystals or gardens or whatever feeds your sense of beauty and calm in your life? Do you need to go to an art gallery? Do you need to see a play? Do you need to journal? Do you need to talk to that old friend you haven't talked to in a long time? And your soul will give you these little whispers and nudges on what to do. And if you're calm and you're in the right place, you'll follow them. But if you're ignoring your soul's messages, then especially if you've done this for a long time, you're gonna fall out of touch with what your purpose really is. So your purpose kind of comes in the form of an accumulated amount of these subtle messages that you get from your soul. They give you little hints, and some of the hints come from your childhood. What things did you really enjoy when you were a kid? Did you like swinging? Did you like skip rope? Did you like drawing on the sidewalk? Did you enjoy painting or playing soccer or hockey or volleyball or whatever it is that you enjoyed as a child? Maybe you were really good at fixing things or you were very, very good at mowing the lawn, whatever it is, like these are all hints as to what your purpose could be. Like if you love to mow the lawn, maybe you should be a landscaper, you know? All of these things are unique and we have a unique personality. So no one's sole purpose is gonna be a carbon copy exact match to another person's sole purpose. Although you can look at influencers sometimes and have certain ideas like, oh, I didn't know that you could become a this or a that. You know, sometimes that's helpful, but deep down, we all have our own unique imprint of who we're meant to become and what our purpose is supposed to be. And the way to find out is to have something like a morning practice. Meditation is very helpful, but if for some reason you don't resonate with meditation, going outside for a walk or going for a swim, maybe, you know, just going and doing some yoga, going out for a boat ride, all of these things will calm you down and connect you to your soul. And then you'll get a sense of what your deeper purpose is. How do you know you've fallen out of touch with your deeper purpose? Well, basically, you know you're not in touch with it when you're doing the wrong thing. So when you're doing something nasty to someone else, like you stand them up. I actually did this a few months ago by accident. I stood somebody up and I had to really think about it. And I realized I was out of touch with my soul because I'd become so busy. So that's a good indicator when you've accidentally done something wrong in your life and you treated somebody badly by accident and you didn't mean to, sometimes that's an indication that you're too busy or you're out of touch with your soul. Or another one could be that you just feel chronically in pain or exhausted. Those are other signs that you've lost touch with your purpose and your feelings of your soul. And you want to make sure that you're taking very good care of your physical health, you're getting enough sleep, you're eating well, you're surrounding yourself with positive people. These things can drain your soul energy, so to speak, because when you're feeling tired or exhausted or around people who are not very pleasant, that can really drain your energy and you can start forgetting who you are. Because basically our purpose from the depths of our soul is very subtle. And so it's easy to become distracted by a strong influence or a loud person or craving or a strong emotion or a thought, and we can forget who we really are. So it's very important to let these things go in your life and make space for calm moments, space for having a breath or so just in silence and not thinking about anything in order to have those feelings that come from your soul that will gently guide lead you to where you're supposed to be in life. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on 
listening to your soul. I really enjoyed making it for you and get, coming up with some examples about how we get disconnected from our soul and how we can get back in touch with it. If you have any thoughts about how you've connected to your soul or ways that you've also become disconnected, feel free to tell me about it in the comments. I'd be really curious to hear about that. I'm sure there's a lot more examples than what I've just listed in this video that could be helpful for everyone else. And if you like the video, please press like and don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new. You're so welcome here and I look forward to sharing a new video with you very soon. Take care.